What's up, guys? It's your boy Randy with On Edge TV, and today we are talking about the Mac Mini M1 chip. Let's get it. Alright, so if you're new here, definitely check out my page. If you're into filmmaking, content creation, how-to videos, as far as like editing tips, shooting tips, lighting tips, and things like that, definitely hit that subscribe button. Check me out, join the On Edge family. So I am a professional filmmaker and I'm a Premiere Pro user. So I do all my editing Premiere Pro. So that's what I'm gonna talk about, my experience with Premiere Pro on the Mac 1, Mac Mini M1 chip. So. I didn't use the beta version. I just went ahead and downloaded the Intel model, um, Intel version of Premiere Pro, um, running Rosetta 2. And so far, I haven't run into any issues. Premiere Pro opens pretty fast. Uh, it has blown me away completely. Um, so I'm coming from a custom built PC that I built eight years ago, and I was in the process of upgrading, and then it just completely gave out on me. So I had to get something quick. So I didn't have uh, the extra cash to just drop on a new computer. So I was like, let me just go ahead and look at the M1 chip, the Mac mini M1, and it was right around in my price range. So um, I got this just as a temporary solution until I can build a new PC or even get the new Mac Pro or just wait on the new Apple Silicon chips to come out for the Pro version, Pro computers. So that out the way, my experience has been flawless. I absolutely love this thing. And um, just using the Intel version on the M1 chip, Premiere Pro has outperformed my MacBook and my PC. I have a 2014 MacBook. And when I render, when I export on those computers, it would take like YouTube videos like this, because I, ex I export everything at 4K, um, it would take maybe a good four or five hours. Some YouTube videos took even eight hours and beyond to export. That was ridiculous and even sometimes i would at i had to like cut back on certain type of effects that i wanted to use because it just wouldn't render um so i exported those same projects on the mac mini and it has dang one project that took three four hours on my pc only took it literally exported in under a minute on my mac mini that's crazy and that's just using the Intel version on the M1 chip. Now, can you imagine when Adobe finally optimized Premiere Pro for the M1? That's gonna be crazy. Cause I know you Final Cut users and DaVinci Resolve users, y'all are in heaven right now. And I'll blame you. I, I thought about switching. If Adobe doesn't optimize soon, I'm gonna switch to DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut. I already have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, but I never really like got into it. Um, tried it out once or twice but I have so many presets I've built for myself in Premiere Pro I've had I have like 10 years of experience with Adobe and I'm an avid uh, after after effects user so it's kind of tough for me to switch over anyway but who is this computer for this computer is for yes it's for whoever honestly if you're a con if you want to get to content creation I definitely recommend the Mac mini I have the eight gigabyte version and the eight gigabyte version has done wonders. So if you're into video editing, if it's 4K, 6K, whatever, if you're doing 6K and beyond, I recommend this, the 16 gig. But if you're just someone like me, everything I shoot is really in 1080 from like my YouTube videos. But outside of that, my corporate work is usually in 1080, sometimes 4K, then I would definitely recommend the eight gigabyte version just to save money you can use that money for either in uh, storage or you can use it for whatever accessories you want to get but if you have the extra 200 dollars get the 16 gig but i am blown away with just the 8 gigabyte version of ram but yeah that's it for me guys it's a quick overview my first impressions of this computer i will do more tests and more in-depth videos on the editing process especially when the full version of premiere pro come out i will definitely do some render tests for you guys so subscribe and stay tuned for all of that um yeah leave a comment below uh, if you're thinking about getting the m1 chip definitely if you have it let me know what your issues are 
there is one issue that I found so far is the ports are so limited. Like you get two USB ports and then two USB Type C ports. That's crazy. That's literally four inputs. Like what can you do with that? I'm coming from a PC with unlimited ports all over the place. I have ports in the back, ports in the front. I have like five, eight ports in the front and like ten ports in the back. So I'm that's my biggest downfall. So now I'm just running dongles and all that stuff. So yeah, if this video is helpful, definitely leave a comment below what your issues are in the MacBook on the Mac M1 chip. And uh, yeah, let's get it.